this Call of Duty video is going to be very different. So a few days ago, I got this video recommended from this channel, which is very interesting. And this video is kind of a reaction video to this reaction, which is also a reaction <laughs> to this video but there are a lot new stuff which i never talked about and i'm going to talk about them here and there are a lot of new settings that you can play with and you can get uh maybe much better results to what i showed you in this video so i try to be as quick as possible in this reaction uh the first thing they're going to talk about is the left stick max so he's saying and this is something that people brought up in the past if i set my default uh left stick maximum to 65 instead of what i have it before it should give me more aim assist because it's hitting like that i think he said it was below to 15 and kind of he's using a uh, left stick max of 15 and what i meant by if you use 65 instead of 99 you get a faster aim assist activation and you're gonna get more aim assist that's very different from uh what you saw here so let me explain it with this chart so this is your default uh, aim curve on the left stick. You can't change it. There is no way to change it. Let me explain. We have a max value here, which is zero, uh, kind of starts zero from here to 199, which is one. And when you have your left max value to zero to 99, your aim assist gets activated from uh, here. Exactly this arrow, which is 22.66% of uh, left stick movement. And you can't change this curve, so it's the same for everyone unless you are playing with DualSense Edge. That's a different topic. We are talking about a standard DualSense and default curve on Edge. So what I said, if you change it to 65, which is here. So let me show you how it goes. This is 100, right? 99. I'm going to bring it down to 65, which is here. So you reach to max value here. And this is our raw left stick movement so from 10 percent to 100 from the center let's say 128 to 255 to any direction or 128 to zero to any direction and when you do this you get aim assist activated not more there is no more or stronger aim assist in this case you get it actually activated at 15 percent but what do they have they have it at 15 percent let's say uh, i reduce it to 15 percent which is something like this we have it we have it after 147, which is 15% of the stick movement at this rate. But if I move it here, you get the max value here. And your 15%, if I can zoom in, your 15% will be here. Your aim assist will get activated here much earlier, around value 2 or 3. I didn't test it. I'm telling you, just uh, relying on the data I have from the past. So you're getting almost like permanent aim assist on your left stick movement and that's the point i told you as lower you make let me make it like before if you make your left stick curve faster by changing the outer dead zone let's say this is inner dead zone so for this much we're not gonna get anything this that this is dead zone right this is outer dead zone 0 to 99 right so i change my outer dead zone my curve becomes faster at the start, my movement becomes faster, I can get to max speed faster, my aim assist activates faster, that's what I can tell. Because if you go under 15, I think there is uh, huge problems with drift. And what I said, if you go very low, it can cause uh, instability and it's not going to be smooth, is about the people who are going to walk slower. So let's say you don't want to run, you don't want to be at max speed. So if you make it 15, there is a small push. How can I reach there? My webcam doesn't reach there. Okay. There's a small push to take you to the max speed. So there is no way you can walk slower if you want to. If you don't want to, this works well. That's why some people use digital plus five uh, on DualSense Edge actually, because you don't have the, those curves on typical DualSense. But there's something else which is interesting to me. They said they feel like the MSS is stronger with 60 or 65. Let's have a listen. Let's see what he's talking about. So if I'm right here, I'm supposed to be getting more rotational aim assist as I'm looking at the target. And I can definitely feel it, right? Like here, I'm not even I'm not even touching my controller for the right stick, just the left stick. And I can feel the pull. Like even you can feel it. Now you might be like Daniel, how is it possible? You said if you get go lower, it starts faster. It doesn't have anything to do with the strength of aim assist. It does indirectly. I, I also saw some comments here which were interesting. They were saying like it doesn't affect aim assist. This is wrong. It's not wrong. Indirectly, it does. Let me show you how. So typically when we have it on 65%, let's say we have it here. If you push your analog stick like a little bit, you have the movement that is going to be slower. Like you have a zone to move slower. But when you are at 15%, which we already talked about it, there is no zone almost, you're, you're going to be at max speed almost all the time. 
But how could it affect like uh, the aim assist strength and that window size, the time you're getting the aim assist? We talked about it actually in the new video. Here we proved as faster you move or as faster the enemy moves, both of them work. It's like the same way, works the same way. If you want to watch it, you can go to my channel. I have a new video about Call of Duty aim assist or as faster the enemy moves, there is less time for aim assist window size on a typical movement or moving your direction with the camera. But why is that? Let's have a look. X row on value. So this is the interesting part. We're talking about left stick alone here from the enemy side who is running, but we are moving the right stick just to test aim assist window size and the timing. And we did reach to a value where uh, six for running, 56 for tactical. You see, when they are running faster, as faster they are walking or running, for example, when they are walking, there were 77 frames to get out of the aim assist target following and a slowdown and all those stuff. But when they are running at max speed, it's 66. This is what exactly happens here in his video where he's talking about it because uh, it works the same way on you as well. When you are moving slower, there's less chance you get out of aim assist window size or target following uh, in less time. But when you are running faster, it's like when you are pushing your right stick faster so you get out of that enemy uh, aim assist window size faster. It works the same way for left sticks. So if you are going to have your left stick on a higher value, for example, 65 or even 99, there is more chance when you don't push it much, you'll get uh, more time in the aim assist window size. It's not going to be related to making it stronger or make the slowdown stronger or something like that. No, it's about the timing. It takes more time to get out of the aim assist window size. But when you are having it on a very lower value, like 15%, there's almost no time to be on a slower speed. You're going to be at max push at least all the time. I can feel the pull, how it's like gradually going on to the person. That's why they say, I don't want that much aim assist. I want less aim assist, which is related to their curve and their sensitivity, which I'm going to talk about them very soon. So to finish this part, when they have it on 5 to 15, as I see here, it's like kind of... They have it 5, I can put it here, it will be 5, and then 15, the end will be somewhere like this. This is the curve they are getting on the left stick. That has some benefits and some, I can't tell it's like a bad thing or a good thing. As he said, you shouldn't rely on any of our settings, you have to test it yourself. It's good in a way, first you're gonna get aim assist even earlier than the settings I showed you. You're gonna reach to the max speed even faster than I told you. But there is one uh, disadvantage for some people who want to walk slower. I don't know who wants to walk slower. If you don't want, then there is no disadvantage in using these settings. But compared to when you walk slower, there is only one disadvantage. If you want a higher aim assist timing, like you want to stay in that window for a longer amount of time, then when you have it in a very low value like this, you don't have the chance. But when you have it on a normal situation like 0 to 65 or 99, then you have more time in the aim assist window size. So I would say like both work fine depending on what you want really. He's probably 100% right. No, 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 I'm not 100% right. Maybe I'm 10% right. That's just me. Even even though like everything he's saying might be like just straight up facts, right? I, I still benefit greatly from 15. So I would say you guys, instead of just like full on believing him or instead of full on like believing me, right? Just, just try, try it out for yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm saying all the time. But I promise you there will be tens of people in this video in the comments that they again ask, what is the best setting? Just give me numbers. I don't want any, anything else. I don't want explanations. Just give me straight up the settings and I'm going to play. So this is where I'm kind of confused about. Maybe you guys can help like explain this to me in the comments. He literally pointed that the polling rate was a thousand hertz, right? And this is, he said this is if it's connected with USB. And then he's saying the polling rate when it's Bluetooth is it's like 600. It's like half of that. And then it was even going to like 240. Why better? Did I not get that part? Oh, the USB is limited. This is... Uh, this part is cut because I, I want to make things simple. Sometimes I include some information, sometimes I just crop them. But yeah, there, there is a thing about this part. We have two controllers on PS5. This is a normal dual sense, okay? This is limited to 250 Hz when it comes to uh, USB on PS5, only on PS5, o on PC as well, if you are using like without overclock. But this controller, which is DualSense Edge, if I can, yeah, it's bright enough. Yeah, this controller is not limited to 250. It's 1000 Hz almost all the time on PS5. So yeah, the, what I was saying there was like use Bluetooth for DualSense because 
it's faster with Bluetooth. 600, 700, 800 hertz. I've got 800 most of the time. But when it comes to edge, use USB. But when it comes to PC, I have to talk about PC. I actually done some overclocking stuff on PC. I didn't make videos about them because uh, I just didn't. If you are using it on PC, I recommend trying 1000 hertz for DualSense at the very least because it's gonna help with input lag, with reducing input lag. And if you go to 8K Hz on DualSense Edge, it could reduce the input lag like by 5 milliseconds. The least I got on PC with DualSense like was uh, 2.5, I remember, and 2.2 milliseconds with DualSense Edge. On PS5, you can reach there sometimes, like 3 or 4 milliseconds, which I showed you with what settings you can get there in this new video which is about warzone but these settings work for ps5 as well not for pc but on pc you can get a stable two to three milliseconds i may make a video about it i don't know how many people from pc watching my videos what he's saying right here right i have noticed too and i've mentioned this in the past for you guys right i do notice that black ops has stronger aim assist right so let me go to the black ops yes i'm playing on linear so he's what playing on dynamic it might be a little different right but i'm just changing the aim assist. so black ops well, here. Wait, he was using gradual. That's very interesting. Now I understand why he's using this setting. It makes sense. I will tell you why. Right, so let me go to the Black Ops. Yes, I'm playing on linear, so he's what? Playing on dynamic, it might be a little different, right? But I'm just changing the aim assist. So Black Ops, well, here, I'm not really getting like that, that insane aim assist, right? But boom, shooting on this. By the way, I have to mention something. Go test it out in private match, and things are different. Like, the aim assist is not as strong as shooting range. I don't know about PC. Let me uh, disclose that. I don't know about PC, but on PS5, things you test on sh in shooting range is not the same as the things you get in real match. The results I get in shooting range is very different from the results I get in real match, even in, in a private match. This guy. Yes, that has really good aim assist and everything like that too. But my problem is, for some reason, I feel like I have too strong of aim assist. And what I mean by that is... You see that movement without touching the analog stick? It's, it's just because of that 0 to 15. That's going to give you almost, not 100%, but almost uh, instant, like permanent aim assist with the left stick without touching the right stick. That's why he doesn't need a strong one. It's just... I, I will tell you why. Wait. Let's just say I'm shooting at somebody super far away. Sometimes the aim assist is so strong that if I want to make super small adjustments, like hit him in the head or hit him over here... The aim assist is like, the slowdown is too much for me and I'm missing shots. So for me, being that like the bubble is a little bit smaller with default, I find myself hitting a lot more shots like that than using Black Ops. Okay, so, hey, maybe I'm gonna give Black Ops uh, a try again. Give it a try. It changed a lot. Maybe it was like updated or... It, it got much less strong compared to the past. That's what I can tell you. It's like, not how you think. I, I would say with the settings you have right now, if I saw correctly 3-3 three, three, and gradual, you definitely want to go with default guys right i'm like okay if you guys play dynamic you don't want to switch to linear try dynamic like with the with the super low slope scale right on zero and you can see it's like it's almost identical okay, let me tell you something first of all it's only four step which means i tested it in 128 160 224 and 255 so this middle parts are not very correct i'm gonna make a new video about it which is coming like in a few weeks that's what i promise you or at worst it comes in a month or two yeah this is kind of how it really is i mean you can test it out this is not linear even on slop scale zero this is not a real linear curve none of them uh, there is exponential ramp all the time not in call of duty i don't know why that's why i like uh the curve system in overwatch 2 much more because you have a lot of possibilities and settings but here uh this is what it is all right, so let me finish it here. His settings is like mostly, let me go back to his settings. Where is his settings? Uh, he is using 3.3 and ADS sensitivity on one. Like it, the camera and aim down side are the same and it is low. And he is also using uh, linear, I guess with slope scale of zero. He doesn't show it. He's using gradual. I mean, I, I, I don't know the point of this one unless he has a different sensitivity sensitivity multiplier for different zoom because uh, when you have both let me tell you this way yeah when you have both your sensitivity and ADS sensitivity the same gradual and like after zoom or instant doesn't matter like this setting could be set to anything unless they found something new I don't know just let me know if you are watching this video make a reaction of this reaction which is to your reaction which is a reaction to my reaction to the comments anyways yeah i i just want to know because uh when you have the same sensitivity for ads and your camera that change which is like gradual or after zoom or instant you have the same speed the speed is not going to change so that option doesn't matter at all 
Yes, he's playing on linear, I guess, Lopez scale zero. And yeah, let me put it this way for you. I'm going to explain it. I used to play a game which was named Uncharted Multiplayer back in 2016, 17, 18. And I was like top 20 in ranked all the time. And those other 20 players, half of them were cheaters. I confirmed that one because they were lag switchers. And like, there is no way that... Uh, I simply call someone cheater, but they were cheaters. I used to play that game. Uh, I was top 20 and people were like, wow, you play crazy. How do you play? Like from 200 meters away, I would kill them like uh, with a high recoil weapon, all shots directly to their head. And, you know, in that game, when you get shot, no matter from which distance, your recoil gets higher. When you are getting shot, your weapon just gets more recoil depending on the weapon you are using. And people were like, how you could control this recoil with this weapon, which already has a high recoil, when you are getting shot from that distance and shooting in the head. And guess what? I had my sensitivity set to two. And they were crazy. They couldn't believe it. They were like, no, this is aimbot. No one can play with sensitivity at two because two is too slow. Like, how can you play with this sensitivity? And I could. I could, I had my camera sensitivity higher, not like this. I had like the camera was all the way up like to eight or nine of 10, but my aiming sensitivity was set to two and it was too slow. And I see what uh, they are choosing here. Linear is actually much better compared to dynamic when you are not having a high uh, sensitivity. Your mind works better because you know how much you push this and how much you expect it to work on the game, where in the dynamic, like, let me show you here. So even standard or linear on slope scale of one, which is something like this, this is a standard. This is not linear, by the way. So yeah, you know what to expect. Even if it's exponential, you know how it goes. But when you are on dynamic, there is a part where, where this goes like higher. There's a bump, a reversed S-curve, and then it gets slower. And I mean, it may work great for many, but when you are at a lower sensitivity, you want a steady, stable movement on your analog stick. And the other thing they are saying, I want less aim assist. That's correct. In that game, there was a slider you could change the aim assist from 0 to 10, and it was set to 10 by default. But I changed it to 7. Why? Because I was using, by the way, uh, th that game had an exponential curve by default so what i did first made that exponential curve as close as possible to linear with a little slowdown like very close to linear but a little uh is in at the beginning it it was something like going like this like this one you see like this and then going to the max that was how i was playing that game okay and then I had my aim assist set to 7. Why? Because uh, when I have a linear curve and I know what I'm exactly doing and my sensitivity is set similarly to my uh, ADS, which is the case here. Assist. You see, uh, the ADS is the same as aiming like the camera. So when you have the sensitivity the same, it, it's much better to get used to. That's how I won that game all the time. Because what you are getting on analog stick is most of the time the same. But if you have a strong slowdown on aim assist, things going to change. You need to push it more when you are on an enemy, when you want to switch to another one. That's, that was one of the issues. In that game, people could revive uh, other teammates. I would down someone and then I wanted to go to the next, but my analog stick would have stuck because the aim assist was strong. I changed it many times and I realized like, with the sensitivity I use, the value 7 or 6 is good for me. This is the case here. The same sensitivity, the same care for ADS and for your camera, and you're having some sort of linear, which is not linear here, by the way. You need a slope scale of 0 to get it close to linear. Then it makes sense to play with something uh, like default instead of black ops. And the other thing, it makes sense to also have your left stick on a lower value. Let me tell you why. So here we have it on uh, 0 to 15, for example. This is going to give me two advantages. I told you I don't want a very high aim assist. That's what also he said. He doesn't want a too strong aim assist. And he wants to get out of that target window size aim assist as fast as possible whenever he needs it. He wants to go to the other target. And this is only possible in Call of Duty, of course, with default and also having a faster change in your movement. I told you based on the video we made, as faster you walk or as faster the enemy walks, the less time you will be in the aim assist window size. 
So it makes sense to be as fast as possible on your left stick to reduce the aim assist uh, target window size timing. It's not the strength, but uh, people say I feel more aim assist. That's what they mean. It's like why they feel more because the time they having the aim assist is more. It doesn't mean it slows them more. No, it doesn't. Both Black Ops and Default have the same uh, strength reduction. I remember in Modern Warfare 1 and 2 it was a bit different, but now they just have the same, like they changed it a lot. So what should you use? This is a part I never like to talk about because you have to find what works best for you. But let me tell you, if you like to walk slower, if you if you want to walk slower and you also like to have more aim assist, 0 to 60 or 65 or 70 is going to be the value for you. But if you want to walk as fast as possible, you want a steady aim, you want to play with lower sensitivity, you want all those features that he's recommending, which is actually good for some people, which I used to use it in another game. Yeah, I recommend going even under 20 or 15. That's going to work for you. But when it comes to sloppy scale, I suggest you to give it a try. Go with linear 0, zero. Go with a standard 0, zero. Go with dynamic 0, zero. I mean... Just forget about dynamic for a while. Play for a few days with linear and a standard. You may find it much better. That's what I'm using. I didn't. Uh, I mentioned why pros use dynamic because of that bump, which in higher sensitivity, it helps them to come like to control the recoil and the aim assist easier because there is a small bump that helps them to increase the speed of change in their aim when they have a value like five or six. But I personally don't use it because I don't like the way it works. So I think you've got a lot of new ideas for new playstyle. You can give it a try because I told you I was very good as long as I was using less aim assist and slower uh, sensitivity in that game. But there is a huge difference between me and this channel, which I'm going to mention here. This channel has over 1000 videos and so much time playing Call of Duty. Uh, I maybe play like one to two or max three hours per day Call of Duty. That's max. Um, most of my time goes to Overwatch 2 because I'm addicted to that game. And what I show you in this channel is sort of like I watch other people, I test stuff in Call of Duty and then I'm like a data analysis behind all those fightings and stuff. I'm a person staying in the back and an analyzing everyone's action and everything and then goes to the front line sometimes to see how things work. But this channel is like a person who is all the time in the front line. So when they talk about their stuff, they have more experience in using them instead of just analyzing them. And then uh, it's actually so cool because I get a lot of new ideas and input from them to, play, to put them in tests. And I think combining these stuff that he is talking about with the analysis I do, you can also get uh, much more information and many more ways to play. But don't forget to check the new videos. If you are looking to understand how Black Ops work, default works with dif different settings or how to get the least input lag on Warzone, because uh, I made a lot of videos for Modern Warfare but not Warzone, you can check it in, in the channel right now and I will catch you in the next video.